the KS-520 convoy was a historically important part of the Battle of the Atlantic off the coast of North Carolina. It really represented a shift in the war away from Hitler controlling those waters off the coast with his German U-boats. It was one of the first time that there was a concerted effort to actually sink these ships in a successful engagement with them in a convoy with military protection. So the process of finding the KS-520 convoy was a very difficult one. This was a partnership with East Carolina University, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, and NOAA's Monitor National Marine Sanctuary. The, the process really starts in the library and looking at documents on where these ships were. But graduate students with East Carolina University's program in Maritime Studies did a geographical information system analysis to really narrow down the area before we use remote sensing to try and search for the convoy. Several different tools were used in the remote sensing survey. One of the things used was side scan sonar. Side scan sonar is a type of device that sends out a acoustic signal from a fish that's towed behind the boat. That acoustic signal is sent out both starboard and port of the device and an acoustic signal comes back and you can actually see the relief and the shadow that's made from that signal and it gives information on what's lying on the seafloor. Another type of remote sensing is called multi-beam sonar. And this is sonar that's sent out in a variety of different frequencies and cre can create a three-dimensional point cloud. We use both of these tools as well as magnetometry. Then using autonomous underwater vehicles, like a bluefin AUV that looks like a small torpedo, we could load it up with a payload of remote sensing tools and actually be able to get an insonified image of the wreck using multi-beam sonar. In 2014, the U-576 was located using multi-beam sonar aboard an autonomous underwater vehicle. In 2016, we were able to gather together partners from NOAA, from BOEM, from Project Baseline, and others to be able to come together and actually go down and get the first images of the shipwreck. The water that we're working in is very deep. It's over 700 feet deep, and a little too deep for divers. So this necessitated the need for us to use mini submarines off the Baseline Explorer, the research vessel owned and operated by Project Baseline. So I had the, the privilege, uh, along with the subpilot Robert Carmichael, to be the first, the first person to see these, these vessels since they were lost on July 15th of 1942. And you know it's crystal clear water, but it's just getting darker and darker and darker the deeper that you get. And then you get to the, you get to the seabed. The first moment that the 576 sort of came out of the darkness, it was just jaw dropping. And looking at the history of these sites and studying, I mean, we've been looking for these vessels for six years or more, and reading about them and looking at reports and trying to find them. And it almost takes on a. Um, not a fictional quality, you know intellectually that it's real, but it's, it's intangible until it's there. And the moment that it, that was suddenly right in front of my face, it was like reaching through time and it was suddenly, it was suddenly just completely real. It was just incredible. And then to be able to go and see, you know, these features on the wreck, particularly things that human beings were meant to be. And you see, you know, ladders on the blue fields and doorways and, uh, which you know, clearly look very out of place underwater, and, and and then you know the moment that you get into the conning tower, you know first you're looking like wow look at look at the the gauges are all still have glass in them you can still see all these it's completely pristine and then you see the uh, you know all the hatches are dogged down which you know, to us was an indication that all the men are still inside and they've never tried to escape and that and you have this moment where you're like oh my god this is a, a tomb. There's just a, so many things that make this site such a unique and special place. The, the fact that both of these vessels are so close together, but also that they just, they're completely pristine. They're totally intact and have just never been touched. I've seen hundreds of shipwrecks in water up to, you know, 250 feet or so. And the level of preservation, both from, you know, from clearly no one had ever been to these sites, and also the level of uh, marine growth isn't what it is in shallower waters because there's not as much light penetration, not as much concretion, and, and uh, it's remarkable that they're just completely preserved. I think what's unique about these sites is that they have very definitive dates of when they sank, you know, we know to the day of when these vessels went down, and because of that they're a great sort of kind of case study or sort of an experiment of understanding 
what happens to these sites and how they interact with the environment over time. And so one of the things that I think is, is going to be really useful is to come back to the site and visit it um, on some kind of regular basis to sort of monitor the condition of the site, but to also see how the site is changing over time and how it interacts with the environment. And really, the identifying the sites is, uh, in some cases, uh, sort of grabs the headlines, um, but I think the, the real work that a lot of the archaeologists involved with this will be doing is actually monitoring this site over time to see what are the best ways to preserve it and how can you learn from studying this site you know, into the future. The National Marine Sanctuaries is interested in these sites because they are truly unique and special places uh, in the ocean. And we believe that the Valley Atlantic and its significance to World War II heritage haven't been duly recognized and set aside for study and for appreciation. And so our long-term goal uh, is to uh, designate an area that memorializes the sacrifice of the merchant marine and the significance of the Battle of the Atlantic off the East Coast, much like a battlefield would be designated uh, from the Civil War or the Revolutionary War. We have this American World War II uh, battlefield that's right here, uh, and we don't have anything that um, recognizes that. And I think that's, that's our real goal in this.